Good evening. My name is Zoe, and I'm one of the co-hosts of Deep Dive here on FilmJoy. And I have with me the movie that I gave my other co-hosts the option of not watching, but we decided this evening we are going to partake in 27 dresses, where Katherine Heigl is about to find her perfect fit. We also have with us some special guests to help get us in the, I was going to say romantic mood, but that's a different thing. So, to get us in the festive mood of a romantic comedy, we have with us another couple to, to help enjoy the love that happens. <laughs> Before we start, we need to walk you through our snack selection. I have this compulsion where if I walk by a new flavor of snack food in the supermarket, I like need to purchase and eat it one time. So, right. Elisa, walk us through these. So, here before you, we have a charcuterie of, <laughs> of, of Oreos <laughs> and, and, and various sundries. Here we begin with a limited edition pumpkin spice Oreo. We have until next week to eat these, according to the expiration date. With a little bit more time, we come to the mystery Oreo. How many of us know what this flavor is actually supposed wow. to be? Just me. I, I'm on the record saying I think it's fish. <laughs> I'm not wrong yet. Oh, that fun. It's fancy. That sort of Fast and Furious style wait for the credit. Mozart found his calling at age five, composing his first minuet. I was eight when I discovered my purpose in life. I was at the St. Thomas Church next to the Hyatt Regency in Weehawken, New Jersey. It was my cousin Lisa's wedding. It's all very yeah, pertinent exactly. information. Mm -hmm. It was our first big family event since Mom died, and Dad was not in great shape. Time to dead mom, 30 seconds. Daddy, can yeah. you take me to the girls when we're asking Damn. Hi, I'm Thaddeus Grant Fenton. I'm Noelle Q. And we're watching 27 yeah. Dresses. And we've watched the first half hour. And Sam, tell me what happened. So here's the thing, Zoe? <laughs> Do you have any idea what's going on right now? No. I have none idea. <laughs> it's a movie that is presenting a lot of things so far. There's a lot of lead time. It totally is a movie. That definitely happened. I have no clue. I'm prepared to love it. I just don't understand what's happening. Can you name one fact? One single fact. I will eat five mystery Oreos if you can name one fact. She discovered her love of weddings at nine because it was the first family the event. Oh, I was wrong, I was so close. There's the whole intro that she really likes weddings. Like, ever since she was a little kid, she's really liked weddings. So, yes. her character is defined by the fact that she loves weddings. Super into them. She's miserable because her mom died and who had the perfect wedding, and so she's been emotionally damaged having to deal with her mom's death and the first event they did after that was a wedding where she was able to be the savior of her family for a minute and save the day and she was so excited about it that she dedicated her entire life to helping people plan their perfect weddings. Were you taking notes? Yes. <laughs> I believe that means you have to eat five mystery Oreos. Plot wise, I couldn't tell you because it doesn't seem like a traditional sort of three act structure where problem is presented and solve problem because uh, that's not happening at all. No. And this is just like, here's a character and here's another character and here's another character. All of them are beautiful people, by the way. They're all the same size. There's a scene where she's yes. in a bride's dress. Yes, she's magic. So it's kind of sisterhood traveling pants, but everybody's dresses fit Katherine Heigl. So what got me excited at the beginning was that I knew I was getting 27 dresses, mm -hmm. but we did get two of the dresses out of the way right at the beginning. Yep. And then the, sh then the movie just started talking about other stuff, which is fine, 
It starts out with Katherine Heigl wearing a bridesmaid's dress that is quintessentially early 2000s with that mm -hmm. amazing just collar not attached to anything else. First one had lapel, I don't even yeah, know what was it was up. a weird like tuxedo collar in an off peri winkle purple gray. <laughs> off peri is very off in this peri. <laughs> almost like underneath a strapless gown that then had a tool slit thing happening. Um, it was too many things. Too much. It was too many dress. It's like it's like Coco Chanel says. Take one accessory off yes! before we leave the house. Thank I know my you. Coco Chanel. Thank you. So she is a bridesmaid in a wedding. I think she's actually the maid of honor. And then she ends up having to do that at a second wedding as well. Yeah, so she's also in an Indian Jewish wedding. Yes. And also in this very purple wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she's sort of commissioned this taxi cab driver uh, that she gets like very naked around uh, to, to drive her back and forth between this. She basically like offers him $300 for the night and, to like be her personal chauffeur. And dings him $20 every time he sneaks a peek while she's changing. Yeah. She, she get Nate's. What are you doing? Hey! This curve. You just cost yourself 20 bucks. I, no one's looking. Cool, glad we settled that. Let's keep oh. moving. There is no humanly way to tie a sorry in a yeah. Having been a bridesmaid a couple of times, um, and having gone Me too. through yes, yeah, respect, great. respect, respect, and going through um, being being both a bridesmaid and a groomsman, forgot that one. I appreciate the kind of nods to common wedding tropes, including the. This dress is crazy, <laughs> and the best thing is you could just shorten it and wear it again. It's definitely so true which is one of the biggest lies ever told in the history of lying. We're gonna love it, because I do love- We are gonna love it. The second dress. She gets body slammed by another single woman at one of the weddings Absolutely while trying jacked. to catch the bouquet. So, thanks Jane. Thanks Jane. Okay. Thanks Jane. Everybody ready? Thanks Jane. Oh, she does this to catch it. She's so excited. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Gets knocked out for a little while. Yeah, and like all of us, uh, when you lose consciousness and you uh, open your eyes, uh, James Marsden appears right there uh, in front of her. That's how I start my day every morning. Um, I get a little jealous sometimes, but we get used to it. Everybody's in this movie too. Yeah. Ed Byrne shows up. <laughs> Catherine Heigl obviously is the lead. Cyclops. Five of these. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This is what. This is your fault. They get into an argument because he is very, very cynical about the nature of marriage and the whole institution mm -hmm. and weddings as a big old party that costs too much. And again, she loves them. Yes, yeah, she adores them. To her them. core. Absolutely. She loves weddings. Yes. Oh, that's so noble of you. Oh. Do you also go around telling small children that Santa Claus doesn't exist? Because someone needs to blow that shit wide open. Oh, so you admit that believing in marriage is kind of like believing in Santa Claus? No. They're Come gonna end me. up together. If I'm rooting for Katherine Heigl, your character yes, sucks. Like I told you. She forgets her like day, day planner, planner. Yeah. in the cab, and this is when James. things go wrong for James Marsden. We've got James Marsden who shows up because he's reporting on these weddings that she has attended, uh, so there's a little bit of back and forth, a little, little bit of flirty eyes from his perspective, but he, he takes her planner after she leaves it in a cab and just goes through all her stuff. This is when we find out he's not the most likable and or good and or moral human. He should return the day planner. He should probably do that. That's not what happens. Oh, I wanted her to just be like, this is sort of water water chat, but not really. Hey, you know, could you? Yeah. Forget it. Oh no. I'm going to pitch this to Buzzfeed. Instead, he goes back to his job where he writes about weddings, even though he is very cynical about them. He is forced to write, what is it, commitment page? Yeah, the yeah. announcements. 
It's a, it's like obituaries, but for marriage. Um, yeah, that's I'm sticking with that. Okay. He's actually the author of all of these wedding announcement articles that she's super in love with. Uh, he decides after looking through her day planner that she would be an excellent uh, source for an article, I guess, about yeah. being lovelorn and obsessed with weddings and. Yeah, I don't. I don't actually know what his pitch was, but yeah. he gets it by threatening to quit his job. Yes, that one from uh, from Jan. Let's see. I know there's a lot of like story happening, and that's what we went through as well. So essentially, our problem that is that is posed to Catherine Heigl is Catherine Heigl is in love with her boss Ed Burns. Fawns over him, is his personal executive assistant, knows every detail about his life, partially appropriately, partially a little creepily. Definitely uh, creepy. Definitely not okay. Then you meet Katherine Heigl's sister, mm -hmm. Tess, who is gorgeous. Now an Ackerman, I mean. Yeah, I, it's impossible not to appreciate that. And uh, turns out her boss wastes no time in appreciating that. Nope, not that yet. He does definitely take her sister out on uh, date dancing. I wish you wouldn't do that near my face. How about you just finish? Seems like you want the attention. I don't. <laughs> Maylin Ackerman's there. Yes. She's hanging out with his sister. Gorgeous. I... Oh, 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 oh! Judy Greer slaps Katherine Heigl. <sighs> and there's a Bernie's Mountain Dog. But that's about it. It's an interesting cast. Like, I really... I really enjoy the collection of actors that are. Kristen Ritter has shown up. Uh, we've seen Jan from The Office. We went to a really cool engagement party for Kristen Ritter. Oh, in and New York, and then but but there's there's an event happening right next door that's like somebody's like retirement party or 50th you know anniversary or something. But they're having this event in what can only be this really ridiculous New York back alley. So like they must have done up this back because she opens the door out and then all of a sudden there's this table of people that she just cursed at, like screams to the to the sky. How dare you? Katherine Heigl's character is like deeply in love with both her boss and also really fascinated by this guy's articles in the paper, but she doesn't know that it's James Marsden. While she's in love with her boss, her sister arrives from out of town, and they immediately googly eyes each other, right in front of her, much to her dismay. So it seems like the issue is, my younger sister, who is perfect, uh, is totally in love with my boss, and I can't do anything about that. And then this other guy is creepy and weird, and I love a thing about him that he does, but I don't know that he does it yet, and I also don't know that he actually hates the thing that he's hired and paid money to do. So, you know, there's that. This movie should have taken one off. At least. So far. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> All right, so we just finished a, the second part of our 27 Dresses adventure. We sure did. So, okay, what happened since our last break? Oh, right, so George proposes to Malin Ackerman's character. Tess, will you marry me? Yes, of course I will. <laughs> We've been on four dates, it's amazing. How much time George. has passed? Yay! After a whirlwind sort of romance, of which an indeterminate amount, amount of, of time. time. There's literally a cut and then we're like at breakfast with the family and dad has made like bear-shaped pancakes with little strawberries cut up to be smiles. Oh, wow, look at those the pancakes. No. Adorbs. Very I think their dad is hot. Oh, yes. He's oh, a catch. Yeah. Oh yeah. Dad is yeah. good to when go. He makes, right? he makes some bear pancakes. Um, actually just Depends on how few notes. <laughs> yeah, dad, dad's good. Family. It's easy oh, to dad's relate great. to the dad. The dad's, dad's good. Dad's he ra good. he raised one very good daughter. Yes. It was long enough to establish, but short enough for the father to be surprised that she's staying in town to get married. Yeah. And they're getting married in three weeks. I love this movie a lot more than everybody else right now, and here's why. So. At the beginning of the film, when when trying to like break it down in my head, I was having trouble relating to anyone. I can see how you would think that, but I actually love all that, that Dorsey type stuff. It's, it's so good how they are 
are doing their best yeah. to make yes. everyone in this movie unlike yeah. Malin Ackerman, Tess, supremely unlikable. James Marsden, still unlikable. Yeah. He wrote in Sharpie in her planner. Over her Over, over her, her stuff. Plans. That um, just makes me itch. Yeah, I, organizationally, he has issues. And part of it was I thought Katherine Heigl was just obsessed. Sorry, Jane. Her name is Jane. Her name? Her name is Jane. Her name is Jane. I actually knew that, but I think I might have been the only one. Jane is her character name. I thought she was obsessed with weddings and just trying to recreate this thing. The big issue is that Tess is planning a wedding exactly like her parents, which is what Jane always wanted. There's a whole thread of her sister getting their mother's wedding dress and then being able to finagle the wedding at their, like, at where their parents were married. And now, at the boathouse. And, and now her sister is entirely swooped in, getting engaged to the man of Katherine Heigl's dreams without having almost anything in common with him. Oh, yeah. So she's planning the wedding that she wants to have. Then all of a sudden, her favorite writer ever just shows up, hey, to profile her sister's wedding. I figured out something that I'm doing in my head now, which is she has an issue expressing herself and her feelings. Sure. Has a bit of a character flaw. Yes. Um, and they touch upon uh, a bit where she has trouble saying no to people. You don't know Tess. She's gonna want me to do everything. I'm not gonna just be her maid of honor. I'm gonna be taking care of everything. So why don't you just say no? What? Say no. You have said no to people before, have you? Yes, of course. Many, many times. Oh, so she actually has a character flaw now that we can correct. Yeah, yeah. She can't say no to people. Yeah, can't. She is incapable of saying no, and she right. met the person that loves saying no, so it's right. kind of a... It's which is which... Tete a tete. Jane refuses to say no to anybody, and is just accepting this and allowing it to happen. Which makes you want to grab poor Catherine by the shoulders and go, girl! Yes, this entire movie would not happen if she stood up for herself. She got really passive aggressive, too. She got so, she refuses to use her words to the people she cares about. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating to see this woman have to deal with downfalls that she causes herself. Katherine Heigl, I feel bad for you. Jane? What? You okay? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, great. The Bye. fact that she Bye. doesn't Bye. tell anyone of consequence. People this is why she's always the bride. Explain your feelings. Oh. Yeah. yeah, she allows all of her feelings to basically drive her completely oh neurotic. My God. In my head, I am pretending that Katherine Heigl is actually British. If she were a character from Downton Abbey, or any British melodrama, any any Merchant Ivory film where you where you can't where you can't let anyone know how you feel? If this were set in London instead of New York, and this were a British film instead of an American one... They'd all be eating fish and chips. It's no, true, that's, that's not quite, almost. She gets some good zingers in, though. She did. Like, when Malin Ackerman's character is, like, really obviously trying to be someone that she's not, just to make herself more attractive to this guy, Catherine Heigl the entire time is just, like, narrating every single misstep and, like, outright lie and catches her, like, misremembering their childhood dog's name and, and so forth. Sure. Yeah, his name it's was Mad Max. Tori, but you gotta say the whole I thing. I called him Tori because I had a list. A list that turns your, uh, to ours. You know what? When I was a kid, I had a stutter. No way! We have more things in common than I thought. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It's so passive aggressive. Right? Like, I don't know how I'm supposed oh to feel. Everyone is not developed except for Jane. Right. So we run into this empathy problem with, uh, what's, what's the name of the, oh, literally everyone else in the film. I love Jane and I want Jane to succeed. So I've already passed, I've yeah. already passed the hurdle. Like, I'm in. I'm sure that this movie ends with her starting her own business of, like, wedding planning. That would be the best ending, though. Probably, yeah. That would be great, because she gets to do what she loves for the rest of her life instead of doing it for, you know. For sort of a complex. Yeah, for yeah. complex <laughs> reasons that are unfortunate. <laughs> when. I found out that all of her friends and family were manipulating her into spending her own cash, her own free time, and every waking moment doing all of their weddings when all she wants is to get married. 
It's like devastating. I feel terrible now. How about this? The fact that my heart actually breaks for her means that this movie is doing one thing right when it's not being more than slightly problematic. Pedro Tess happens to be Jane's sister. Oh. Hola, Pedro. Oh. Yeah, um, look, Jane, Tess and I are gonna take Pedro Isn't to Isn't she one who works first. internationally? That was a weird, that was a weird choice for comedy. That was a weird <laughs> choice. <laughs> it's not an okay thing. I've lost Mike. But then we get the dress montage. Wait, there must be more than 27 though, right? Because she didn't model the three we saw at the beginning. Whoa. Plot twist. <laughs> I don't mean to like break this whole thing open. So she's in all of these wonderful dresses and we are the lumberjack team. So yes. I think this is wonderful. And we actually got to see the 27 dresses. We did! They're all awful. Uh, well, except for the suit. The suit the wasn't suit, bad. The suit looked good on her. Everything else costume-wise looks really great. It looks appropriate. And again, I really like the costumes because there's always stories behind the bridesmaids' dresses. And I think that's really fun. And it's clear that Katherine Heigl's character likes the wedding she goes to and likes the friends she went to the weddings for. So I like it. Oh, oh. I'm still here. All good. Unlike Tess. So we are continuing to watch 27 Dresses. I, I love it. I, I, I'm into it. So we've had a lot going on now. I'm fascinated mm. by what they're doing with Betty and the Jets. Yes, I agree. Yes, yeah, that, they, that, too, that too. Hey kids, shake it loose together. We're gonna talk to you about what's going on in this movie so far. We finally get our first hint of chemistry between Jane and yeah. James Marsters, which he immediately blows. I think you want a wedding, not a marriage, a wedding. Ooh. What is your problem? Do you have your own fancy wedding that your wife left you or something? Well, bingo. Yes. And the piano kicks in, motherfucker. I think there was a little bit of chemistry during the montage, but then like, yeah, you get them actually talking and having conversation and getting to know each other. Yeah. The, the movie is obviously going to try to put Jane and James Marsden together. James Marsden kind of kicks off by figuring out what literally no one else in the movie has been able to figure out, that Katherine Hagel is in love with her boss. Yeah. Just by looking at her. The light bulb. The second I saw you mooning at him over Polenta, of course you're upset. You're planning your sister's wedding to the man that you're in love with. Because of course, nonverbal communication, she's playing with her necklace and leaning in. Like you could just two seconds and he and he knows it and he feels it. They spend this kind of whirlwind night driving through the rain. She insists she's not gonna hydroplane and then manages to stop. Immediately hydroplane. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's like, it's not going to hydroplane, and the next sentence is, we're hydroplaning. Slow down. You're not gonna hydroplane. We're hydroplaning! Whoa! That's like not a small problem. So they go to a bar. Yep. Very damp. Soaking wet, yeah. Very damp. They they have a few drinks. Oh the god, they get so tanked. Meat cute, sort of. Yeah, and then cougar bait. He does this. Yeah. Oh, he does yeah. this at he's, some point. And he's Drunk. and she's like, what? yeah, and this this handsome individual, and you see him in the on the side, but no, just it's just angle amazing. for that sag card. Just angle amazing. for it. It's like they're gonna give me a line. I'm gonna get that card. He steals the show. He's my favorite thing in this movie. And they share this moment of like they both like the same part of the wedding, which is looking at the groom while the groom's looking at the bride. And it's very touching and and so that was really charming. Then they lead the bar in Benny and the Jets. It's adorable. Benny and the Jets does make a grandiose appearance in an attempt to help us bond with the characters and everyone in the bar. Oh yeah, this entire bar has never seen anyone sing along drunkenly to a, a song ever before. They're all, they all like look up from their pool game and go, wow, look at, wow. Everyone in the bar is doing the absolute most which is great. It is. And they, they reach the moment where they're gonna kiss. Yeah. Very. I was very into it. I was like, yeah, let's go. So they kiss and it's very good. It's a very good kiss. And then they get to the car and it they kiss some more and then it fades to black. So like things are eluded to. And then the next They listen morning, to all of her 
Lisa Loeb mixtapes. That's what that means, Naturally, right? Yeah. Big black. There it is. The article comes out the next morning. He feels her, and yet the article comes out anyway, mm -hmm. which is not his fault. But still, it's kind of a shit move. It's a hit piece that makes her look really sad and lonely and really bad. Sad mean and then it's mean to her sister and it's mean to her boss and it's like it's mean to everybody adjacent to her as well she was involved in this piece about her sister's wedding yeah and it's it's Which is not what he wrote i mean it's still kind of his fault it is he did snowball this entire thing and kind of like just hand deliver the goods to his boss who was like yeah this is a thing it goes from real good to real bad real quick. My second favorite thing is that I now am like sad for Katherine Heigl's character. I'm invested. I'm like, super all in. Yeah. I, I, I feel so bad for Jane. <laughs> yes. Her boss too, like her boss hasn't done anything too terribly bad except for like. Doesn't do much of anything. Y yeah, be I, he's kind of a, a little bit of a prop, I guess, <laughs> right now. Yeah, it's. It, I think it's fascinating that he is being now portrayed as like super caring and like he's he's worried when Catherine Heigl's article, sorry, the article about Catherine Heigl uh, uh, goes out. His first concern is about her feelings. So there was like a moment of like happiness whenever he was trying to make things better. They're slowly turning up the charm and likability on Ed Burns, and they're slowly turning down the like, well, slowly. They're immediately turning down the yes, likability very hard. of Millinar uh, Ackerman as quickly as possible. Using your hand, Howard. Let's talk it out. Oh. Jake. Oh. He's like, you're for a part-time job. Oh, let's go. He's cleaning the apartment. He doesn't realize he's in a relationship built entirely of lies, <laughs> and she doesn't realize how absurdly selfish she's being. Mm. Very good at making us not like Malin Ackerman, despite uh, being gorgeous. They're gonna be at the wedding, and both of these main characters are gonna look at him at the wedding and realize, and, and that's gonna be his moment where he realizes he doesn't wanna marry her. Like that's that's that moment, right? Yeah, you can't have I that uh, be both of their like shared favorite moment and not have that be like a significant plot payoff, right? That's the prediction. The D wedding yes. is gonna crumble before everybody's eyes as she walks to. in. As she walks in, in her in her butchered mom's dress. This hack hacked up <gasps> something. Yeah, no, it was not an okay thing. Thoroughly uncool. Yeah. Every other character that isn't <laughs> Jane is just. Ethically? Yeah. Ah! Yeah. They're mystery Oreos of ethics. Yeah. yeah, it's a bad taste in your mouth. Um, no one is likable, um, except for Jane. I really like Jane. I think Katherine Heigl is extremely likable, and she's extremely down to earth, where like, you see her stress eating french fries, and I'm like, I feel you, girl. Like, I've been there. As opposed to her sister, who has flaws, that are just really like villainous. Selfish. Yeah. I don't know how this is gonna resolve. I feel like I'm not entirely sure what ending is gonna make me happy, except for Katherine Heigl actually not doing this Esh for free. I chip Jane and an LLC. That's, that is my ship. We're together on this. So we just finished watching 27 Dresses. I really enjoyed it. It was absolutely adorable. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. I just finished watching 27 Dresses, a film masterpiece some people have described as... It was fine. It was fine. It was fine. It's fine. It's fine! It's fine. It was fine. So for me, this movie exists on a bit of a, a curve. It was hard to get started, but the more progress the movie makes, the more sort of enjoyable and fun it becomes. Romantic comedies don't get a lot of coverage like this on the internet. I didn't hate it. Actually, I was pleasantly surprised. And it had some cute turnarounds on uh, traditional sort of romantic comedy tropes. So Katherine Heigl could have had her moment where she completely ruined her boss, who she's madly in love with, uh, and her sister's entire lives. Chekhov's Ed Burns. Because if Chekhov's gun goes off and is supposed to hurt, wound, or kill somebody, Ed Burns goes off towards the end after his wedding with Katherine Heigl's sister Tess 
is ruined by finding out that his relationship was built on lies. Uh, it could have been one of those moments where the boss realizes what he'd been missing was in front of him the whole time, but they kiss and actually there are no sparks, there are no fireworks, and that was actually really, really refreshing. Ed Burns' kiss kills Katherine Heigl's crush on him. It's phenomenal. I had seen this film already when it came out 10 years ago when I was a teenage girl. It resonated a lot with me then, and I, it still does. I think Katherine Heigl character Jane goes through a lot in this film and she learns a lot. So there's a scene where Katherine Heigl is over it. She's like, I'm done being this bridesmaid. I'm gonna change. I am changing my world. I'm communicating. I'm doing things better. I'm gonna be my own person because I haven't let myself be my own person because I've been too worried about everyone else. But that's why we watch films, so we can experience other people's lives and see the circumstances that they're in and how they would handle it. Towards the end, people started speaking very frankly about what they're feeling and thinking, which was really refreshing because up until that point, the entire movie was about no one actually saying what they were thinking or feeling. She finally starts talking to people and things go bad and then she's actually finally able to like mend these relationships that haven't been good the whole time and I thought that was great. It was kind of funny sometimes. Like it wasn't, it, it was like a romantic movie about some things but it wasn't necessarily a comedy. There were some really interesting things that happened in this movie where our main character grew as a person and learned how to stand up for herself and I think that's so, so, so important for women to do as a whole. You're not gonna get movies like this all that often, but the goal of the show is to pull a bunch of things out of the dive box. But it was easy to love, because I, I, I could relate to the central character very easily. A lot of the people in this movie were not necessarily decent. I do wish that James Marston was a better human overall, and I think had this movie come out this year versus 10 years ago, it would be a very, very different film. All in all, this was not Mordecai, <laughs> and for that I'm eternally grateful. She of course ends up with James Marston because it's a romantic comedy and that's where we're going. We all know this. James Marsden remains like incomparably sort of kissable, smellable. <laughs> but that being said, the dresses were a lot of fun, the costuming was a lot of fun, the cast is just really great to look at for an hour and 50 minutes. Some of the ladies made a wonderful prediction about what happens with all the dresses. It would be perfect if she made all of these brides wear these things, cut to last scene. Which is kind of nice, because now she's free to do whatever she actually wanted, rather than yeah. which yeah. one. God, God. They all yes. wear it again. Yes. They yes. all wear it again. We'll explain that in a second. They pull back and reveal all her bridesmaids and every single one is wearing one of her bridesmaids dresses all the way down the line. It's a beautiful shot. And that is how we come out and that was just this beautiful moment. Anyway, I really recommend this movie if you are the sort of person who 25 dresses just doesn't do it for you. If you need a little bit more. Even if every woman is all the same size because they all fit in Katherine Heigl's dress. Every single bride fits in Katherine Heigl's bridesmaid dresses. Every woman's the same size, man. <laughs> this one was fairly easy to get through. It was, it was fun. I really enjoy this film. You know what, it was, a, it was a satisfying ending. Hard to start, beautiful finish. It was fine. Next time on Deep Dive. Now that we have finished tonight's adventure into our deep dive box, it's time to explore once again and see what <laughs> treasures Ooh. hide within this brightly colored treasure chest. Here we go. <laughs> oh, ooh, oh, but I like that one. You will have to make a choice. Our executive producer is telling me. Okay, well, this bitch is a sing-along. Xanadu! I actually love this movie. Yes! I mean, it's Gene Kelly's finest hour. How could you not? 
next oh. time on Deep Dive. Xanadu. <laughs>